This is Chris the Idaho Painter here on Paint Life TV. If you want to get amazing results staining the fence, this is one video you need to watch. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks how I go about staining the fence so it looks absolutely amazing. So stay tuned. So I'm staining this fence here and I'm going to show you some of the tools and accessories I use to stain a fence and get professional results. First thing is I got a bucket and a, a stain brush. I always use a stain brush to back brush. Back brushing is very important when it comes to getting professional results staining a fence. In order to make the process fast, I like to use an airless sprayer because that's getting the stain on very quick instead of having to dip in a brush or dip a brush in a bucket and then put it on. Using an airless sprayer simply amazing and fast. I'm using a Titan HEA tip which is a high efficiency airless tip and it is low overspray. We're gonna be running around 800 to 1000 psi and the Titan HEA tips are um, the best when it comes to cutting overspray doing fences. I like wearing gloves so I got gloves and I want to get any stain on my hands. If you're gonna be doing any spraying, it's good to have a respirator also and be wearing a respirator. So the staining process, I'm gonna start showing you what it looks like. It's very important to have somebody apply the stain with an airless sprayer and then somebody right behind them back brushing the stain. The whole back brushing process is actually pushing the stain deep into the pores of the fence. This is a rough sawn cedar fence and it's gonna make it last a lot longer and then you're not gonna have all the striping or lap marks you typically see see in a lot of the fences around the neighborhoods that do-it-yourselfers spray with like weed sprayers and stuff like that. To get professional results you got to put a whole lot of product on. Well, I'm typically using two to three times more than most do-it-yourselfers would so you're putting a lot of product on and somebody is right behind you back brushing that while it's really really wet. If there is no if it's soaking in really fast and there's nothing to back brush for the back brusher the back brushing process isn't really helping or or doing anything so you definitely want to be putting on a lot of product and somebody back brushing it if there's nothing to back brush the back brusher needs to tell the sprayer hey apply more product this fence has been up for a couple weeks it's had enough time to dry now it's been over 100 degrees you want to make sure your fence is nice and dry before staining it if you're using an oil-based stain that's very critical so I got everything set up here we're gonna begin the process right now I got my helper my daughter Afton's gonna be helping out one of us is gonna be doing the spraying one's gonna be doing the back brushing and we'll show you what it looks like. So I got my Titan 440 pump I'm going to be spraying with right here and this is an oil-based stain that I'm using. I really hate oil-based products but that's what you're using today and what's really convenient about the smaller pumps is I can stick it right down into my five without having to take the lid off my five and I'm good to go. I'm golden. So I'm going to set this thing up. I'm going to get this thing running around 800 to 1,000 PSI and we'll begin spraying and back brushing here. I'm using a Titan HEA 515 tip. So that is um, the HEA's high, the high efficiency airless tips. So you have to run those tips at low pressure or they finger really bad or don't give a good spray pattern. But the nice thing about it is, is they're really great for doing fences because of the, the little amount of overspray they produce. So got everything ready to go. We'll test this out. It's good to go here. I'm gonna get my respirator on, get a few other things set up and we'll get going. So as we're just cruising right along here, give you some tips and tricks. If you're watching the video, the B-roll footage that we're showing you, you can see me spraying and just absolutely saturating this fence. You know, you can see where the fence is really dry. And after we sprayed and back brush it, if I need more on the dry spots, we just spray more and continue back brushing it until it gets a nice, even saturated look like, um, like it looks right here. And you're not having any lap marks, but you're seeing it's just the fence is absolutely saturated. This acts a lot different than a water-based stain. Like a water-based stain, you have to back brush a lot quicker because the water product soaks in really quick, evaporates really fast, and dries really fast. Where an oil-based product like this does not dry fast at all, so you have a lot more working time. So I can spray it, step back, let some of the um, overspray in the air you know, drift away, and then step forward and begin back brushing it. We've had to improvise a little bit because of this really thin oil product we're using. I kind of switched out tips. I went to a fine finish tip. 
drop down, but then it wasn't putting out enough product. It would take me, you could actually brush it faster than you can use a fine finish tip. So I switched back to the HEA 515 tip and that's still, that's working really well. And I've got, I've got the pressure cut down to probably around five, 600 PSI. Over here, we'll uh, mask off the house right here with paper masking, and then um, we won't spray too close to the house. We don't want to get any overspray on the house, so we'll just hand do a lot of that stuff. But it's just coming right along. It's pretty saturated. Some of these um, dry spots here, we'll just go back with our bucket, put some in the bucket, and then we'll take and um, hit some of those dry spots one more time. But it's, having, it's getting that nice weathered wood look, saturated look. You'll see when I'm spraying it on there, it's like it's just running everywhere. I'm not concerned about runs because I'm going to be back brushing all those runs out. I'm just wanting to get a lot of product on and saturate it. You can see how the spraying versus dipping it in, you know, I'm at least three times faster you know, spraying it and back brushing it versus if I was just brushing it out of a bucket. I know people ask me, you know, why not use a roller? If you use a roller, it drips. Um, when you're rolling, it pushes it off and runs off the roller you know, really bad. So we don't like using rollers. We like using stain brushes. This stain brush is a brand new one. That one's been used and it's a little bit stiffer. I like the a used one because it's stiffer on a rough sawn feet cedar fence like this. But you know, we're cruising right along and it's looking really good. Once again, this is an oil-based product and we typically don't use oil-based products. Very, very rare. The water-based technology nowadays is extremely advanced and we use a polyurethanized water-based coating, but the, um, this is an experiment we're doing on the fence here to see how this product holds up an oil-based product. One of the drawbacks to oil-based, if there's any type of wind or if the humidity is high, the, the oil could lift up in the air and carry for long distances and that's something you always want to be concerned about. We went to water-based coatings because we don't want to have to worry about those overspray concerns and the oil carrying down the road onto cars down the road and stuff like that. This is a neighborhood. Um, the houses are extremely far away. There's no cars, nothing liable here for overspray, but that's something you definitely want to consider when using oil-based products and also trying to do the slats. This fence has gaps right here, so you're shooting product through the gap. If you can watch, I'm trying to stay really close to the fence so I'm not far back, so it's not shooting a ton through those gaps and stuff, but it's dropping. I um, know, adding oil to the wood is adding something good to the wood, but it's just simply not worth the liability and the overspray that can carry. And unfortunately, I started this job with oil. I wish I hadn't, but I'm here and I gotta finish it up with oil or the fence is not gonna match. So on this side of the fence, I've just took a rake, just a regular rake. I've raked the rocks away from the fence so I don't get any overspray on the rocks. And then once we spray the fence, we'll just move those rocks right back. That way I don't have to try to shield it and, um, and keep it off the rocks. It's just a little bit easier way. We just carry a rake in our vehicle to rake them back and that's it. Hopefully I've given you some tips and tricks, you know, staining the fence, getting it to look amazing, you know, like a professional painter. If you have, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, the little notification bell on the side of the subscribe button, hit that. That'll allow you to be notified every time I come out with a new video. That's all it is. Simple, free, easy to do. Pound it, slam it, bang it. Just don't break your video screen like I've said before. Anyways, we'll see you on our next video. Hopefully, out.